What's cracking guys? Welcome to Noble's first top 10 video. What the fuck? Dude. If you guys are wondering why I'm doing this video here, um, it's gonna be like kind of a one-time thing, basically because in all my Noble Senpais, you guys are always asking, Noble, which animes do you like? Wood bada boodle bada 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 bada. It's it's exactly like that. Those 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 comments are legit. And I figured I might as well grace you with my anime knowledge. <laughs> Jesus, that sounds so pretentious. But seriously, I'm gonna give you guys a list of my top 10 favorite anime of this season so you guys can, you know, go watch them, go enjoy themselves because, you know, if you guys are watching my channel, that usually means you enjoy very similar tastes to me. <laughs> so, I might as well just get started here. Uh, but before we begin, uh, some ground rules I'm gonna lay for this. If I'm only gonna do new original series uh, that appeared for the first time. I'm not gonna do sequels uh, for any of the animes that appeared before, uh, otherwise my top 10 would look very different, and I'm talking things like High School DxD, Nisekoi, or Kuroko no Basuke third season, which was fantastic by the way. Or also my teenage romantic comedy, uh, To Love You Darkness, <laughs> that's my guilty pleasure there. <laughs> and also Working Season 3. Oh god, I love working. The anime, not, not actually doing like a job, but then again, my job's YouTube, which is pretty good. So, anyway, top 10. <laughs> This is gonna be a little bit different because this there's other animes that deserve this spot a lot more than the one I'm about to give it to it But I'm gonna just consider this my guilty pleasure anime <laughs> So as for what my guilty pleasure anime is that would be Showman Sample If you guys follow my channel at all you would know that this anime is a lot like Princess Evangel How so? It's basically a guy is taken away from the streets and thrown into the freaking all-girls academy where they're super rich and well pampered and known absolutely nothing of the outside world and the reason they do this is because they want them to learn about commoners because they have a problem of the girls becoming neats it's weird I know but excuse it it's a it's a fucking hilarious comedy and so basically Kimito, the main character, gets a harem of a bunch of different cuties here, of Reiko-sama being the best one. <laughs> Probably a bunch of you guys are gonna say no to that. But it's basically a good mix of comedy, edgy, and harem, all, all thrown into one. It's absolutely fantastic. Ep episode after episode made me laugh, and that's why it gets my guilty pleasure spot. Now for the legit list of this anime season, my number 9 pick is Monster Musume. I'm pretty sure this anime brought back the whole monster girl fetish again. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Basically what the anime is, is taking a bunch of just normal girls and fusing them together with monsters and still making them absolutely adorable and kind of giving you the most awkward boner you're ever gonna have. So what exactly is the anime about? It's basically about these monsters trying to integrate into human society and by doing so they go into host families so to get people more gradually used to having these monsters uh, in society. For whatever reason they're only girl monsters I don't know why, <laughs> but anime, that's the reason. But the focus of this uh, isn't the story, it's more on the characters and their development and just the, just the comedy that goes in between each and every episode as well. I think they did a great job of making people come to love a freaking snake girl. I mean, how many people would want to get it on with a freaking snake girl? Well, she looks like that. <laughs> I think alone for the refreshing breath of air in the harem genre from these monster girls is what makes it deserve this number 9 spot and plus the writing and comedy was good so Sue is still best girl. My number 8 pick is probably gonna surprise a lot of you and that is Snow White with red hair. Now even though this was a shoujo genre I still enjoyed the absolute shit out of it because the setting, the characters, and the story in itself was just so great. Even the fight scenes were well done. It had a lot of a charged emotional impact in it. Shirayoku was babe. She took care of herself. She was a good independent woman, but not like over the top pamp uh, pandering to like the female demographic. She was believable, but she still failed. She had her faults, 
and Zen was just like this cool upbeat guy who was not actually just absolutely perfect in every single way like the typical shoujo stuff he had faults he was he was trying his best to woo this girl over it, t it took a lot of effort <laughs> but, but but he actually does manage to do it in the anime and it just makes it so satisfying to watch and it's also even getting a second season so i cannot wait and i cannot recommend this anime enough now for my seventh pick is uh, of an all-time favorite I've been following for a long time, and that is Assassination Classroom. Now, the story of this one is these kids have to assassinate this badass tentacle monster, Koro Sensei. And what it does well is it takes this entire classroom of kids and somehow manages to give them all a sort of character and make them likable. Now, what makes this so endearing and so good is that Koro Sensei, who's you're supposed to be assassinating is actually helping these kids who are in a terrible situation um, at the school because basically they're the form of ridicule for all the other students basically saying if you don't want to wind up like these losers you want to do well in school now all the while Koro Sensei is fending off assassinations from not only his students but from the general government and all around the world just anything you can throw at him but he's also helping these students in the process to become better people. So not only is this man a badass, he is an awesome, lovable badass. <laughs> and that's why I gave him the number seven spot. Now for my number six pick, it is Gate. Now what Gate is about is about this guy named Itami who's like a 33 year old otaku who's basically kind of like a secret military badass that's kind of was in retirement. But when these monsters formed a gate in Japan, they basically came through it and started slaughtering a bunch of people in the hopes of conquest. But that's when Itami and the military basically slaughtered these medieval bastards with just normal modern warfare weapons which makes absolute sense. And then basically he goes on adventures through the gate, leading his company of troops in order to make peaceful negotiations with them while trying to understand their language and their whole heritage. And it just makes everything so interesting as these two clashing cultures come together and collide. And it also helps that it has a little bit of harem elements with Itami getting like this cute elf girl, this cute bookworm, and even a goddess herself. Hell, what also makes me like the main character even more is that he's been married before to another woman who still actually kind of likes him as well. It, it just takes the typical stuff you find in anime and just, it's a new breath of fresh air that I really enjoyed. So I definitely recommend watching Gate. It's even got a second season that's airing currently, so check that shit out. Now number 5 on my list is Don Machi, or is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon? Again, you guys may be sensing a little bit of a harem pattern. Don't worry about that! <laughs> the story basically follows this kid named Bell who's trying to become an adventurer like his hero, Eyes Wallenstein. So he forms a pact with this sexy lolly busty goddess, Estia, who has made boob ribbons a thing in Japan and widespread hentai all around. <laughs> but that's not why I came to love this series. It's kind of like reverse SAO in a sense, being the deeper you dive into the dungeon, the harder it gets. But how it differs from SAO is it's not trying to actually leave the dungeon because you're in a terrible place. It's more of them trying to get money, get fame, get bitches. <laughs> Literally, I think what Bell's goal is. He's, he's trying to become a hero. That's that's what's up. And it's the trials, the action, the animation, all coming together to make it an enjoyable experience. And plus, you know, the harem element is pretty damn good <laughs> with all the girls that come around him. And the adorable Bell himself trying his best to deal with it. For number four on my list is One Punch Man. Now, Fall 2015 didn't have a lot of spectacular anime, except for this one. What makes One Punch Man so likable is the fact that it's just this ordinary guy who wants to be a hero and tries best to become one, but it's just kind of failing because the rest of the world doesn't quite want him to be a hero, even though he is the strongest and he's just trying to do what he thinks is right. But what really makes this series shine, more than just the action itself, is the humor tied to it. It's just the comical blend of this bald Saitama badass guy who one punches monsters and it's just so overpowered that he, he's basically become bored <laughs> and he, nothing's really a challenge and it's his struggle to overcome this. 
Now along the way he gets like his quirky sidekick Genos, <laughs> who basically serves the purpose of sh being this really cool badass guy and to show how strong this other opponent is, and then Saitama just comes and one shots the son of a bitch. <laughs> but there's real drama, there's real tensions, there's real good waifus too, who unfortunately one didn't actually make an appearance <laughs> in the anime, but maybe in its sequel way down in 2020 when the manga finally is able to make content for another season, <laughs> maybe we'll see here then. Now for number three on my list, it is Overlord. Now like SAO, Log Horizon, and even Don Manchi, it follows kind of the RPG elements of you being stuck in this world, of this fantasy realm and you trying to cope with it. But what makes this one so much better is that you follow the head of this badass evil organization. Now while there is brutal fucking fights and death and just unhappy stuff and kind of darker themes in this, it also has a nice light air of comedy and things to go with it as well. Plus the fact that one of the best waifus I think of the season, that being Albedo, was in that show as well, who was an absolute crazy Andre for Momonga. I don't even know how she was going to have the sex with this son of a bitch or how she wanted to do it. <laughs> he can't pop a boner, <laughs> which is so ironic. But besides the main characters, the rest of the cast are nice and lovable. I, I liked all of them, what I saw, and that's why I cannot recommend you guys watch Overlord enough. Definitely one of my favorite anime of maybe even all time. Now for number two on the list is probably going to be surprising you guys again, because it's my love story. Now while it is Shoujo, it doesn't follow the lead of a female, it's actually Gota, a male huge mountain gorilla of a man who you usually don't see in these kinds of stories. But by god do you fall in love with that son of a bitch so much! And what makes it nice and good is like a lot of shoujo manga, he, the girl and the guy get together just fucking right off the bat. <laughs> not, not actually fucking, but, but, but you know what I mean. And plus uh, his friend, Sunakawa, plays an interesting role because he's actually there. He's like a good bro for his buddy Gota. He helps him out. He's not like interfering with the girl at all. It's more of a focus on these two's love story, their love story, <laughs> which is where the title comes from. And it's just a heartwarming, feel-good fucking story that just makes you mmm every time. Just mmm so good every time you watch it, feel bubbly. So that's why I can safely place my love story on the number two spot, even though I kind of wanted to give it one, but this other one was just so good, I had to pay it respect. For number one, it's gonna be Food Wars. This basically took a fantastic tasting turn on the shonen genre itself. It didn't follow the typical formula of like battle stuff you see in One Piece, Naruto, Fairy Tale, all that other stuff you usually see. It doesn't follow like the typical rom com situations you see in like Nesakoi or Torovru, but instead, it's more of a focus on food. Actual making good cooking food, and it somehow makes it so badass. And interesting! I never thought I would care so much about a man cooking breakfast <laughs> for, for a bunch of people. It doesn't make sense, but you still want this guy to succeed. Now the basic story is this character named Soma gets thrown into a school by his dad in order to show him the way of cooking, this way of life, in order to become just a better chef in general. And this entire school is so elite and will kick you the fuck out as soon as you mess up. That's how badass the school is. So basically, Soma has to go against this entire school of upper crust guys who resent his guts because he's just like a corner street like cook. But why I gave this number one spot is because all the characters are so endearing. You even care about the enemies, <laughs> except, you know, maybe Erin Um, But she's hot, so maybe I'll let it slide. But the way it balances the story with the characters and the food to make you even hungry every time you watch a goddamn episode, <laughs> it's, it is just so fantastic. And also, how can I forget the foodgasms? <laughs> All the fan service of that is great. The art and animation, everything is just so amazing. You guys need to watch this if you haven't watched it already. And it's even getting a second season, so I can't recommend it enough. So there you go guys, Noble's top 10 list. Obviously, opinions are going to vary 
heavily, but, but that's fine. I've come to expect it. I haven't watched every anime, I'm gonna admit. And plus, I'm heavily biased <laughs> in my taste. But if you guys have a top 10, don't uh, don't be afraid. List it in the comments. Say what you thought was good. And have a good, nice discussion of what animes you thought were the best this season. But just don't take craps on each other, okay? <laughs> Unless you're Food Wars, and it's a fantastic tasting one. Whoa, whoa, but before we go, tired and exhausted noble here from the future. If you guys want to catch some of these anime that I mentioned, you guys can sign up for a 30-day free trial using Crunchyroll slash Lost Paws. There's a link in the description. You guys just hit it up. You can watch some free anime, stream it, wherever you want, 1080p quality, buttery smooth. <laughs> oh! That's enough selling out here. I hope you guys enjoyed this top 10 video here. Hit that like, it really supports me, and subscribe if you haven't already. And hope to see you beautiful sons of guns again next time. You crazy mother-